broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight for the brave hearts we watch were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs bursting Well, thank you so very much. First of all, let me say what a joy it is to be here today and to see all your smiling faces. Um, and it's a special day, a special weekend, and we're so very uh, pleased to be here to honor not only our freedoms, but those that have sacrificed so much 
to defend those freedoms. Um, this is a quick aside, I'll tell you, that, uh, that I just got here from Cloverdale. I, there's a parade in Cloverdale this morning. I wanted to come here and be with you. I'm going to walk up the street and do uh, a little oysters and art and, uh, and then hit the county fair. And then I'm supposed to finish out my day at a dunk tank in Walport. That's, <laughs> that's, that's the glamorous life of a coastal legislator. You can legislator. do it. You can do it. But I, I'm so very honored to be part of this event this afternoon, and I wanted to share with you uh, a story that I, I told recently on the floor of the Oregon House. And I, some of you may have heard it, but I just wanted to share it with you today. Um, and, and the story is that, uh, that before I became a legislator, I used to travel quite a bit uh, on business. Uh, I'm looking around the crowd today. Have any of you been to Normandy? I have. I have. I'm seeing a, a few hands. You know, the thing that strikes me about Normandy is that it's that the, the coastline there is so very similar to our Oregon coast, um, that it, it's the rugged coastline and the cliffs and, and occasionally some gift shops and some, uh, and some small inns. Um, it looks a lot like home until you kind of stare out across that, that large expanse of beach. And in your mind's eye, you see that iconic image of four American soldiers wading ashore. And one of them is hit, one of them is fold, and that, it fell on falls, and that's, that's really when you really, it strikes home to you that you're really on hallowed ground in a very, very special place. Um, but as I said, uh, now gift shops and inns and souvenir stands, uh, time changes things. Um, I've been to the island of Guam where the U.S. Marines came ashore and now there are uh, playgrounds and swing sets and tennis courts. Um, but on the very edge of the beach is a faded memorial with images, pictures taken, the day that our U.S. Marines liberated that island. Um, I've been to Korea, at the edge of the, uh, the demilitarized zone. And you know, for, for a couple of coins, you can look into these giant um, um, binoculars and stare across the DMZ. Um, I've been to Vietnam, and, and for not more than $5, you can hire a young man to guide you through the tunnels that were once used to try and flank our own soldiers. Um, and I've been, to, uh, I've been to Kuwait, and on the fields where our tanks once formed up, now they hold uh, national ceremonies and festivals because time changes things. It was a few years ago, um, I was doing a job in the north of France, and one of my friends says, David, I'm, I'm going home this afternoon for lunch. Would you like to come and have a meal with my family? And it was a couple hour drive and I said that, that sounds lovely so we drove across the countryside we had a wonderful meal with him and his his wife and his two daughters and as we finished the meal his wife said to me you know David there is an American cemetery just up the street you should go and visit while you're here so I, I, I walked through this quiet neighborhood you know with with kids on bicycles and lawns being mowed people washing their cars uh, just a quiet suburban neighborhood, and at the end of the block, I turned the corner and looked up the street, and there, waving in the light breezes, was a single American flag. And over the gate were the words, Flanders Field. I, I had to stop for a minute. I mean, I just it, it took a moment for that all to sink in. Flanders Field, where the poppies grow between the crosses, row on row. And I, I walked into this place. Perfect lawns, manicured hedges, bright flowers, row after row after row of stark white crosses and an occasional, um, occasional uh, six-pointed star. Uh, and I stayed quite some time in this special place. And afterwards, I came back uh, to the house and joined the family. And, and the schoolgirls, they were doing their homework. And one of them turns to me and she says, David, I'm doing a report on America. Tell me about America. Wow, um, that, that's, a, that's a heady obligation to try and describe America um, in, in just a few words. And I said, well, you know, you should walk up to that cemetery because if you look at the stones there, you will see names. And some of the names will look uh, English or Irish. And some of them will look Eastern European. Um, there's some there that, uh, that look uh, Hispanic. There's some that actually look Chinese or Japanese. Um, read those names. That will tell you something important about America. But there's something more, and that is that those, those men, they came here, they fought, they died, 
to defend your freedom. And if you know nothing more about America than that, then I think you know enough. So let's celebrate the names on this wall today. Let's celebrate Great. those who have served and fought Great. for our freedom, their families who have sacrificed so much. And thank you all so very much for, for thank being you, out Dave. here today. having a silhouette of the American flag behind it, but not nothing, something that's not going to be overpowering. Uh, the nameplates um, can be added. The plaque they had before, um, once it was made, it was done. But these, these nameplates, we can, we can continue to add to the board um, uh, throughout the years. So as you get closer, then you'll see the flag actually stand out a little bit better. You're welcome. You're welcome to come up and look at this. My names. Yeah. If they have anybody that seems like they have up. Sorry. Huh? <laughs> 